All right, YouTubers, uh, just to wrap up my critical psychology for now, I'm going to talk about evolutionary psychology, or sociobiology as it was formerly called until sociobiology got a bad rap, so I had to change its name. Um, so, anyway, the, I studied evolutionary psychology last year at um, university alongside critical psychology, so it was good to get both perspectives on this. And essentially, evolutionary psychology tries to, the, the fundamental claim is that once we know everything that there is in the involved uh, environmental past, uh, the, um, you know, 100, 200,000 years ago, once we became human, that was the, the human nature was defined, it was set in stone, and culture, technology, agriculture, you, you know, all these things, language, they, they just sort of go on top. Um, they're, they're superficial expressions of fundamental uh, evolutionary and biological drives. That is the central claim of evolutionary biology, which you can clearly already see it's bullshit, um, because to assume that human nature is essentially the same across all cultures and across all times is... <laughs> Is, is not even looking at, at the facts at all and it's part of it makes it part of this Flintstones history um, you know the the term Flintstones history means if you look at the Flintstones that's not what Stone Age people did that's what 1950s people did and instead of driving around real cars they're driving around stone cars and, and whatever so we have to be very careful of this but Desmond Morris's The Naked Ape is a Flintstones history. It's quintessential Flintstones history. Now I know it's it's not hard to, to criticize this book, especially if you've uh, if you've read it. Um, I, I suggest you do just just for some historical context. But basically, it imposed a fifties ideology onto the essence of human nature. It saw the male as you know hunter gatherer, grrr, and and real emphasis on the hunter aspect of man. He was the breadwinner and women were very passive in their role um, in, of evolution. It was it was man's, you know, aggressive nature that, that shaped that shaped our human nature. And he comes uh, Desmond Morris comes up with just so stories to say how this could have happened and really it's just fifties ideology as human nature. Any uh, differentiation from this uh, within different cultures or, or tribal things, he basically thinks that they're unevolved. So that's certainly one thing that you have to be wary of. Um, second book I'm going to use as criticism, more recent book. Uh, I wrote a review on this. I didn't write a too bad review because I wanted to get good marks. It was in evolutionary psychology. But I did say this, and I'll say this now. Um, it, the book has its virtues. It, it talks about the uh, evolution of morality, uh, emotion, um, the role of empathy and altruism in human nature, which is certainly very good. Um, and it uses game theory, which I quite like the use of game theory, but it can be used to justify simply absurd things. Um, however, evolution, it falls down, as does all evolutionary psychology, when you say, yes, this this behavior is here because at some point it was uh, evolutionary beneficial to us, but there's things that are blatantly not, like um, homosexuality, exclusive homosexuality. You might say that animals are homosexual. Recent article in New Scientist said bonobos, the more homosexual you are, the less violent you are, whatever, but other animals aren't exclusively homosexual. So you can't justify that. You can't justify celibacy at all, and you will struggle to justify the high suicide rates in humans. Um, you, you will struggle. You could you could talk about reciprocal uh, altruism and and group selection or whatever, but it's it's really pushing it. So what what they say when they come up with this challenge is, well, you know, all behavior is reducible to uh, evolutionary drives. But the human mind is so complex it can overcome these drives. So it really wants to have its cake and eat it. Um, 
but again, a lot of critical theorists, this, this is my solution or conclusion, a lot of critical theorists may be skeptical of, but I do think memes are a great way to overcome this, because memes consider the role of culture as a driving force in human nature. Not only that, they don't say that there's any set in stone human nature, they, they acknowledge the dynamic aspects and the role of culture that, that we, we can even observe. They acknowledge things that will contradict the evolutionary drives and they don't have culture as being this superficial expression of biological means. It's, it's an essence in its own right and uh, the, it, it means we get out of this Flintstones history because at one meme plex uh, at any given time at a given location can be completely different and harbour different beliefs, desires, intentions, actions, whatever. Um, so I, I really do think memes are a solution. So just to summarize, evolutionary psychology falls on its face because it can't justify all behavior as being evolutionary beneficial when it's not. In the past we've imposed our ideologies right on top of it and um, it's, it's too simplistic. It assumes a human nature, it assumes a static essence of man. And I think all of these problems are overcome by memetics. Um, I'm going to leave it there. Um, I hope I hope I get a few text responses. Maybe if anyone disagrees with any of my critical videos, like the uh, intelligence one, um, then I'd, I'd like to hear a few video responses back because I'm I'm sure a few of you disagree with what I said. Um, so yeah, take care, guys. Peace.